Using Bleed and Elden Ring is nice and it destroys your enemies rather quickly. But what happens if you add another OP status effect to the mix known by the name of Frostbite? And to make it even better, what if you also add Fire to the mix and thus can infinitely keep proccing your Frostbites next to your Bleed procs on your enemies? The cold-blooded flame is exactly specialized in that, namely the arts of mixing fire, bleed and frostbite together to quickly erase the existence of whatever he's fighting on the battlefield. In addition to this, the cold-blooded flame has a very diverse moveset and various tools to completely break his opponents, whether they are nearby or in the distance. His fighting style is characterized with elegance, harmony and ninja-esque dance and with this is a real force to be reckoned with. This is my get OP early guide for the bandit. The bandit fits the idea of either a bleed or a bleed frost build very well because the class has in fact the highest number of points in arcane and dexterity for its starting levels, exactly the two stats that will be our main stats. Arcane is intrinsically linked to bleed procs because it influences the pace of blood loss buildup on enemies and it also scales the raw damage of our weapons. And regarding dexterity, well the weapons in this build that we will use will primarily scale their raw damage through dexterity. And dexterity is also a very important stat for weapons that have the cold affinity. This makes the bandit a great choice for this build as a starting class. Now the bandit starts with a few things, really capitalizing on being lightweight and using small equipment and setting up for an assassin or stealth type of playstyle. You get a dagger, a small shield and a short bow, nothing really too crazy. In this build we are going to take it to the next level however and use equipment that is a lot more powerful and fits the starting stat distribution of the bandit. The bandit that we will build and ultimately make evolve into the cold blooded flame is going to be an elegant killer using very deadly swords that have blades on both sides of the hilt. However, if you're interested in a build that revolves around daggers, then check out my Black Flame Rogue build. In that video, I go over what is actually the most powerful assassin type of build for when you want to use daggers. That build is also very fun. It is a fate based build and in my opinion, much stronger than a dagger build that focuses on bleed or other status effects. And since it's a fate build, it doesn't really fit the bandit. However, like I said, we're going to make something extremely powerful and fun for the bandit as well that actually fits his starting stat distribution the best. And funny enough, there's already a great weapon right next to the starting area. For it, you want to go to the Dragon Burnt Runes and approach it from the south basically. In the south, you will find a set of stairs that leads downstairs into a room with a chest. Now, it is important that you open the right chest because if you open the wrong chest in this place, you will be teleported to a place that will give you PTSD. So make Make sure it's this one. Inside of this chest will be the twin blade. The twin blade is the easiest to get twin blade within the weapon class of twin blades but it's definitely up to par with the other twin blades. We're going to use twin blades for this build because they are the best way to set up an infinite bleed frost proc build and they just deal a lot of damage in general. In addition to that, Twin Blades have a really nice moveset. Even though they are on the heavier side, they feel very fluent and smooth to use. You can hit your enemies with both sides of the sword. So either blade works and both the normal attack moveset as well as the charged attacks feel nice to use. Thanks to the rather large range of these weapons, it's also a very reliable way to hit your opponents. And with their movesets in mind, they will deal a lot of damage just in mere seconds. So you can just keep hitting things with your blades quickly. But that's not all, because if you use two twin blades at the same time, it becomes even better and you become double the trouble. We will also be using jump attacks with them. With this you can quickly build up frost and bleed on your enemies because you can hit your enemies up to 6 times with just a single jump attack. And I will be talking about that more in depth later on in this video. But now with that in mind this is the first twin blade we can start using to set up the build and just already start killing everything. The twin blade actually comes already with a pretty nice ash of war. It is pretty basic but it's an elegant move and definitely does a great job early game of dealing a lot of damage to enemies quickly. We will still replace it though in a bit but yeah.
Before we set up the actual build though, we want to do the basics to get OP early. If you know, then you know exactly what I'm talking about, but I will quickly go over it so the new players that watch this video also know what I'm talking about. First of all, you want to get the golden pickled fowl food right here in Limgrave. But when you have done so, go to the third church of America, pick up the goodies that are laying around here for you to pick up, and then go beyond the church and take the teleport. This will teleport you to exactly here on the map, and you want to go south till you reach Fort Ferret. That's this spot on the map. Ignore all the enemies on the route to the fort, no matter how big they are. And when you arrive at Fort Ferret, you want to pick up a very nice talisman. You want to ignore all the bats while you're running inside and move towards the ladder. Just run, climb up and then pick up the Dactus Medallion. This is very important, so don't forget to do that. Then keep moving till you get to the second gap and jump down. Move to the right of yours, pick up the golden rune that's laying around there and then jump to the sneaky pathway to your right. Keep moving till you can jump down again and there will be the Radican Source Heal. If you're not familiar with this talisman, it's a very good talisman that will help us out because it provides a lot of relevant stats right at the start of the game. Then go outside. Kill Grail, the big ass dragon. When you get to Grail, you can just use the great knife that the bandit starts with. It already has bleed on it, so you can just keep slashing the dragon with the dagger to proc bleed over and over till he dies. Make sure to use the golden pickled fowl food right before he dies and you will get a whopping number of runes. And also make sure to use the golden rune you picked up inside the fort. With this you will have a bunch of runes and if you go to level up with them you can go from level 5 to level 36 and get quite some levels in stats that we definitely want. First of all you want to get 22 dexterity and at least 19 arcane. With this you will have all the requirements for the equipment we will use without the need to always have the Redican Source Shield and it already gives a nice boost to our damage output and blood loss buildup. And then put all the rest of the points into vigor making you already very tanky and have a lot of sustain early on. Which is nice because we will be in melee territory a lot with this build and thus you can actually take a lot of hits yourself without dying so quickly now. Now that you have done that you have a nice start and you want to get the second weapon for this build. First of all you want to go to Fort High to get the second part of the medallion, the other half basically. And with both sides of the medallion it is time to make the journey to the Altus Plateau region. Go back to Limgrave, go to Lurnia and bypass Stormville. You don't need to defeat any bosses to go to the Altus Plateau region. Then move towards the lift in the northeastern part of Lurnia. Use the medallion at the lift and you'll have access to the Altus Plateau region. In the Altus Plateau region you want to go to the second church of America. And in this place you will find an extremely dangerous and fearsome person that is so powerful that you will need at least 9 million hours of playtime in Elder Ring to defeat her not even Yurik could defeat her. And as you see, he's lying on the ground and got completely humiliated by the person we're going to face in a second. Look who's here. This bitch just has it all. She can use dragon attacks, moves that proc bleed on you, and she deals a lot of damage while moving around quickly. This is the definition of unbalanced. How do we defeat such a monster early on? I, I don't know, do we just call it quits here and give up? No, because Eleonora might look powerful, but she has the IQ of a pavement tile. Just jump off the ledge right near the church and this dumbass will just jump right with you and kill herself as well. That is what we call convenience. Now you will die as well, but you respawn at least and she doesn't, so you get the juicy loot we came for. Also to be honest, if you want to actually defeat her normally early on in the game, or actually at the very start of the game, like in this video. She isn't that hard to beat, just keep attention on her moves and when she goes to cast a dragon attack, that's your moment to just strike because you can smack her into the ground every time like that. But otherwise you can just use the good old bait to make quick work of her. Whatever option you choose to get rid of her will net you Eleanor's pull blade at the very start of the game and this is the perfect weapon for this build because Eleanor's pull blade has innate bleed and with that is the only twin blade in the game that actually has innate bleed which makes it perfect for the early and mid game. You don't need any upgrades to get a significant amount of bleed nor do you have to get a wet blade or ash of war to apply the blood affinity on your weapon to get bloodlust buildup in the first place but that's not all because Eleanor's pull blade is extremely versatile. So not only does it have the most OP status effect in the game already on it, it also has all the benefits that I mentioned with the normal twin blade, so great moveset, damage, range, 
flexibility and it's just a very smooth weapon to use. But in addition, it also has Blood Blade Dance, which is the Ash of War that is unique to this weapon. The Ash of War just breaks whatever you're fighting, to be honest. It has a lot of poise damage inside of it, so you can use it to stance break things quickly to set up for critical hits or to set up for easy jump attacks. In addition to the Ash of War just being a nice way to quickly hit your enemies in succession, it gets a lot of damage in, it builds up blood loss to proc bleed as well, and it's just extremely versatile in the things you can do with it. If you press anything at the end of the dance, so after getting all the damage in, you can do this evasive maneuver as well, so you can ninja yourself out, take a step back so you don't get hit, and make sure whatever you're fighting isn't going to retaliate against you. And did you think that was all? No, because Eleanor's pull blade is also half fire damage, so if you use this twin blade in conjunction with another twin blade with frost, which is exactly how we're going to build our other twin blade, it will remove the frostbite application on your enemy. And I'll go a bit more in depth about this in a second. All in all, the weapon is just extremely versatile and you can use it for whatever purpose you want really. You don't have to just use it for the jump attacks to keep proccing bleed and frost. You can also just use it to stance break your enemies and go for easy critical hits like I said. Or just use the Ash of War to deal damage quickly or use the actual moveset of the Twin Blade to deal damage like that. There is a lot you can do. Now if you have made it to this point in the video then that can only mean one thing, you like the video. So make sure to hit that like button and if you're not subscribed to me then make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Because it is free and yeah, why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> now that we have this beauty in our possession it is time to modify our other twin blade accordingly so we really become a cold-blooded serial killer. For this we want to go to the southern part of Lurnia, pretty much near the gate down bridge Grace. Make sure that it's night though when you do this or the guy we want to murder won't show up. Because when it's night there will be a night cavalry patrolling the area and this is our next target on the hit list because this guy will give you something very powerful as well. With Eleonora's pull blade he should be quick work and the best feeling is when you knock him off the horse and then pierce him because without his horse this guy is nothing and it just feels too good. And when you kill him he will drop the ice spear ash of war. This Ash of War is incredible and it fits this build so well because it now makes our build the best version of a frost bleed build possible, especially one that you can make at the start of the game. Put this Ash of War on your normal twin blade and it will now become a cold twin blade. This means your twin blade can apply frost on your enemies and thus proc frostbite at the very start of the game. Since this Ash of War applies cold on your sword, you don't need to go the traditional route of obtaining the wet blade to manually apply cold on your sword. And you can get that wet blade only after you defeat the dog with rabies in the Raya Lucaria Academy anyway, so you'd have to do story stuff. In other words, this is exactly what we need and want to complete the build so early on. But that's not all because really we had pretty much everything we want in our build already if you just strictly talk about wanting to destroy everything in the game if you think about it except for one thing something to attack enemies with in the distance and this is exactly what Ice Spear does. Not only that but it looks and feels amazing as well to use and definitely fits the theme of the build. <laughs> Ice Spear hits your opponent from a nice distance and does great damage, giving us an option to strike enemies anywhere and everywhere we want. Nobody will ever just hit us again from the distance without getting punished for it. Not only that, but Ice Spear is also really low cost, especially if you consider what you can do with it. Because at the same time, next to its great damage, it also builds up Frostbite from a distance. So we now also have an option to proc Frostbite from a distance and that is also not all because it also has amazing poise damage. So after a few applications of this Ash of War on your enemies, you will always stance break your enemies and this gives you a lot of room to go in and completely destroy your opponent. Ice Spear is just too good and there's even one more reason that it's really good because it is an Ash of War that has really high base damage. As you can see I'm attacking Margit right now and this is with an unupgraded cold twin blade and no points spent into intelligence whatsoever which would affect the magic damage part of the twin blade which Ice Spear solely scales with and Ice Spear is already hitting like a truck in addition to it eventually proccing frostbite. This is great because you really don't want to invest points into intelligence with this build 
death, at least not anytime soon. And thanks to Ice Spear's massive base damage and the ability to apply Frostbite, it thankfully compensates for that very well, making it great for a hybrid build like this where Arcane and Dexterity are just much more important stats. Now that we have covered the weapons, movesets, Ashes of Wars, everything really, this leaves just one aspect of combat that we need to talk about. Using jump attacks and the infinite bleed and frostbite proc machine that you can become with this build. So I already talked a little bit about it, but every time you jump attack, you hit your opponent six times within a second with the twin blades. These attacks, all these individual hits within just one attack will build up a ton of frost on your enemies with our cold twin blade and a ton of bleed with Eleonora's pole blade. And usually within every other jump attack, you will proc either bleed or frostbite or just both and you will just absolutely melt your opponents because you can just keep procking a status effect on your enemies like that. And this is thanks to the fact that Eleonora pole blade consists out of fire damage partially this means that every time when the fire of Eleonora's pole blade touches your enemies it removes the frostbite of them and you'll visually see this in game as well because the icy mist surrounding the enemy disappears as well and this is a very nice feature of my frost and blade build because usually if you apply frostbite on your enemies you can't proc the initial explosion of damage on them anymore after that instead you apply a debuff that will do other things for you which is nice for other types of builds but in this build we actively just want to keep proccing the initial frostbite explosion because it's just really easy with how many times you actually hit your opponents with twin blades to keep proccing it over and over and due to that you will get damage in much quicker compared to the plus 20% increased raw damage debuff that you would otherwise get from frostbite and then go the traditional route of just normally attacking after that. One final thing that is nice as well is that you can already start building up Frostbite in the distance with Ice Spear and then finish it when you get into melee territory with normal attacks or power sense attacks or do it the other way around, get the Frostbite proc when you're in the distance after building it up with jump attacks or power sense attacks in melee range. This is a really nice harmony that the build has because if things get dangerous in melee territory or in the distance you always can adapt to the situation. Now let's talk about the flask and the two crystal tears that you want to get because you can get both of them at the start of the game. The first one is going to be the flame shrouding crack tier that you can get in the northwestern part of Caelid from killing the putrid avatar. This crystal tier will raise the damage of Eleonora's pearl blade directly because it will raise the fire damage on it, making it a very nice option because as you know we will just continuously hit things with Eleonora's pearl blade so a buff to its damage directly is very nice and you can get it right at the start of the game. Then the other crystal tier you want to get is also in Kaelid. This time it's going to be from a way more tanky and challenging Petrit Avatar near the minor air tree all the way in the east. This is just a copy paste of the Petrit Avatar we just faced but this one is actually on steroids and all kinds of other substances. Get hit and you die if you do this at the start of the game. But thankfully we are so OP with my bleed frost build. Nothing is too much of a challenge for us. Killing this putrid avatar will give you the stone barb crack tier and this crystal tier will increase the poise damage on all our hits and thus is especially nice with blood blade dance or jump attacks or really just in general the twin blades moveset. All these attacks already have nice poise damage but with this crystal tier in our flask we will stance break everything even faster making it just a very fast process to break any enemy in the game really. And killing this guy gives you a whopping 91k runes as well by the way, just the cherry on top. Just keep that in mind because you can use those runes and get like 10 more levels at the start of the game. And with that let's also talk a bit more about stats. With a hybrid build like this that applies two different status effects at the same time, your damage is going to scale through a lot of different stats and it can get quite messy and you can completely gimp your damage output if you don't approach your stats carefully. And really this is because pretty much every damage stat in the game is related to our twin blades with this bleed frost setup except for fate. 
but what you want to do with this build is definitely prioritize arcane and dexterity for your damage stats and just ignore intelligence unless you get to really high levels and you don't have much left to spend points on and the reason for this is because dexterity is the primary scaling attribute and linked to both of our twin blades and arcane does a lot for eleonora's pole blade damage output and its bloodlust build up at the same time so it is a very important stat while on the other hand, Intelligence is the lower scaling rate on our Cold Twin Blade, so only one of the two Twin Blades, and it's just not that important. It really has minimal influence on your damage output with this build. Around level 75, this is going to be a nice stat distribution, pretty much giving you something of everything. And then ultimately, if you start working towards a level 125 build with this setup, your stats could look something like this. For Arcane, you want to get at least 45 Arcane, so you cover the levels that give you relatively the largest increases to blood loss build up and you'll see this reflect into the graphs it's the juicy part of the graph and Eleonora's pole blade actually scales harder with arcane compared to dexterity and this might be a bit confusing because if you look at this weapon in game you'll see that dexterity has a higher letter scaling but if you do the comparisons you will see that investing points into arcane will still make your damage output higher and the reason for this weird phenomenon is pretty much thanks to Eleonora's pole blade being partially fire damage now for dexterity you also want to get around 45 I would say as both our twin blades scale well with dexterity and it's near dexterity's first soft cap for weapon damage. Then you want to get at least 40 vigor to reach the first soft cap of vigor and just be tanky in game and get that sustain going. Get around 20 mine to really be able to use both of our ashes of wars comfortably and then the rest of the points in endurance which will help out with our stamina and gear options. For a level 150 build I would get 50 vigor. 55 dexterity and 55 arcane this will make you reach both the first soft cap for dexterity as well as for arcane for weapon damage and you'll get more bloodless build up with that as well while becoming more tanky if you struggle a lot in pve or are a newer player or pvp a lot i would shave five points from both arcane and dexterity and then get 60 vigor instead Something else that you want to consider is after defeating Margaret, you will get another talisman pouch. And for this talisman slot, you definitely want to get the claw talisman. It is a talisman that you can get very early on in the game, in Stormveil to be precise, and it fits this build perfectly. It increases the damage output of our jump attacks, and as you know, we'll definitely be using those jump attacks frequently because they are just so good with a bleed frost wind blade build like this, and therefore the claw talisman will do wonders for this build. Now the last step in this video is going to be to really have the most powerful start for the most powerful bleed frost build and that is achieved by upgrading your weapons. You can get a weapon that upgrades through smithing stones to plus 16 really easy with my method that if you watched my previous get op early videos which you obviously have you know exactly what I'm talking about and a weapon that upgrades with somber smithing stones to at least plus 6 very easy as well. So let's go ahead and do that before we wrap up the video. Let's first get our cold twin blade to plus 16. For this you want to go to the Raya Lucaria crystal tunnel in Lernia. Go all the way to the bottom of this cave and fight the boss right there. Defeat him with both our twin blades, it should be an easy fight with all the poise damage in our kit and you will just completely break this guy. Killing this boss will net you the somber stone minor spell bearing to buy spitting stone 1 and 2. Then you want to go to the seal tunnel in the altus plateau region. In the seal tunnel hit the hidden wall, go to the chest and pick up the second bell bearing to give you the possibility to buy smithing stone number 3 and number 4. Then you want to farm the miners here because they drop smithing stone number 5s. Do this until you have 12 smithing stone number 5s. When you have farmed enough smithing stone number 5s, move through the cave some more while hitting more of the hidden walls here. And eventually you will want to drop down to the room with the big abductor thing. Go to the, I don't know what it is, but it has light radiating from its structure. Lure the abductor to it and when he moves towards you and hits the structure, he will break it open. And it will make it possible for you to loot 3 more smithing stones. This time it's a smithing stone number 6. Now you have all the smithing stones you need to be able to upgrade your cold twin blade all the way to level 16 at the very start of the game. For Eleanor's pull blade, we want to do the same thing, but with somber smithing stones and to plus 6. You can buy Somber Smithing Stone 1 to 4 for relatively cheap by talking to Ichi. Again, on the road to Caria Manor. He's right next to the Grace right here. 
so it is extremely easy to upgrade to weapon 2 plus 4 right away. Then you want to go to the dragon burnt runes and this time in fact take the teleporter chest right there because you are now a lot stronger than at the start of the video. Doing so will teleport you to the Celia crystal tunnel in Kaelid. Go outside of the tunnel, mount up and basically keep moving forward while hugging the right side of this area till you get to exactly this opening. Go to the right here and make your way to the end of the path where you will find the somber smithing stone number 5. There is also a somber smithing stone number 6 in the Celia crystal tunnel itself. You'll have to progress and move up and down various times. Ignore or kill off all the annoying ass enemies in this cave. Whatever you want to do, but just keep progressing till you get to the boss in this room exactly. This tunnel is also filled with smithing stone number 5s by the way. There should be at least 8 here, so you can shorten farming the miners for smithing stone number 5s quite a lot if you just pick all of the smithing stone number 5s right here. Now when you get to the boss, kill him. It shouldn't be that hard with how OP you are right now. And you'll get a somber smithing stone number 6 to get Eleanor's pull blade too plus six. Having done all of that, you'll now have both of your weapons upgraded to really high levels and you'll now be the strongest Bleed and Frost Twin Blade build possible in the history of Bleed and Frost builds that you can also make at the start of the game. This video will also have a follow up where the cold blooded flame gets a twist and becomes a different character based on things that unlock in the later parts of the game. For now you have the strongest possible bleed frost build that you can make at the start of the game that also has a lot of variety in it as well and every aspect of combat covered which makes it so much fun and you can now go ahead and just destroy everything in the game with my bleed frost build and just beat the entire game like that. However definitely stay tuned for the follow up video as well you don't want to miss it because if you thought that infinitely proccing two status effects bleed and frost at the same time was nice well wait till you see the late game version. Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe and hit the bell thing so you are the first to get notified when I upload something and let me know your thoughts in the comments.